Hi and good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat, the episode number is 764. And this is um, what to do instead of your inner tyrant, which actually is part two, I should say, excuse me, what to do after independence from your inner tyrant, I think. I've got to figure out what the title was because I wrote it down and I didn't remember what it was. Basically talking about the inner tyrant, which I'll explain more in a moment. And also what I covered yesterday to recap, because this is part two, which is what to do instead. So before I jump into that whole thing, let me choose myself to know who I am and what I'm about. Strange day today. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Um, if you hadn't really figured that out, I am the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples about relationships because that's my focus. I'm also an inspirational speaker and sometimes entertain, entertaining as well. And a relationship attraction expert for women helping them create balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with women. It's also what inspired these talks over two years ago, two, yeah, over two years ago now, called Messages, Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. So today we're in episode number 764. Done a few of these. And this is part two of a topic I dropped yesterday because being Independence Day yesterday, I came up with this crazy title, said it's time to declare independence from your inner tyrant. And then after I did the talk, I went, oh, I forgot something. So today is the what I forgot <laughs> to fill, up, fill it up. So before I get into today's piece, let me do a quick Cliff Notes version of yesterday's piece because that will give you some reference if you didn't see yesterday's talk, although I'd recommend watching it to get more of an ex, ex, uh, what's it, exposure but in-depth conversation because I did do it yesterday early because 5 p.m. my usual time I was already heading out to go play. So what I meant about the inter our inner, inner, inner tyrant is the critical negative voice that most of us run inside or have run inside for most of our lives. And I shared up some of the reasons why it happens which can be from parental upbringing, from abuse or, ch or challenge we have when we're younger, if you were bullied when you're younger which is one of my experiences, those things are places where we tend to start doubting ourselves and we start reinforcing that doubt with self-limiting criticisms and judgment. And that becomes a reflexive, ongoing, recycling experience. And I said one of the ways to deal with that is to, and I'm, I'm trying to remember what I said, in, but I'm going to be more, of, again, edited down version because I want to get to this talk today, was basically is to find out where that started and to get back and to reframe and to um, reintegrate that aspect of yourself. It's not about actually, even though I said declare independence from, I wasn't saying I didn't actually mean like to cut it off and get rid of it because it's part of who you are. So it's actually a misleading title in a way, but actually come back and integrate that part in a new way so that critical voice becomes positive. So today I want to speak more about the positive part, about what you can do differently and how you can transform another way that inner tyrant into an inner um, champion? No, it's not the right word. An inner cheerleader, that's a better word. So instead of being a tyrant, be a cheerleader. Complete transformation, of course, if you if visually see what a tyrant looks like and a cheerleader, they should look different. So today I want to talk more about how to transform a different way. So again, the title today is, um, no, I don't have the title in my head, so I'm going to, have to re I'm going to make it up as I go along, is how to get, <laughs> how to be able to um, how to, once you've declared independence from your inner tyrant, what to do differently, something like that. I know I messed the title up four times already, so I have to go back and watch what I wrote and see what I wrote. Anyway, this is part two from yesterday. So now you've got caught up with yesterday's, like the, um, was a previously on Messages from the Masculine, that's the way they do it on the TV shows. So now you've caught up from yesterday's talk, basically in a very simple way. Again, watch that broadcast to get more, more full description now, which is the Cliff Notes version to today. So. So actually, it started from a meme I posted yesterday morning, I think it was, about if we, I don't say, the, the meme was something like if, that we've spent most of our lives judging ourselves and criti criticizing ourselves. What if we put the same amount of energy into to supporting ourselves and loving ourselves? Something like that. I probably messed that up too. So here's the thing. Here's the point, the key, is that we have a resource inside of ourselves that we can use for or against ourselves. And if we don't know what's happening, oftentimes it's been running on a negative path for a long time. Again, I said yesterday, that voice that got reinforced from negative experiences or patterns or upsets or wounds, abuse, even rape I talked about briefly, or bullying, anything like that, will start to reinforce a negative self-talk. The thing is, so we don't track it. 
rarely do we get to the point after something happens to us where we go, okay, what happened happened. I'm fine. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to love myself through it. Most of the time, we just start berating and judging ourselves because we feel somehow we're responsible for putting ourselves in that situation in the first place, even when we're helpless to do anything about it. Either we're too young or too weak or whatever that is. So what I'm attempting to teach, well, I'm going to teach you if it lands, is how to do things differently so that that voice no longer has power. Because the reason why that negative voice, that tyrant inside, the critic, has so much power is because we never stopped it. And it sounds so simplistic to say that, but that's the truth. It's not a um, inevitable, uh, persistent voice that has control all the time because we have control. We just simply don't take control of that part. So what I'm suggesting is, is take control, basically. But it is, what I'm saying is literally is to watch that voice inside. And the simplest way to start is to start becoming aware. Like, so simple. Well, yeah, it is a way, it is that simple. Because when we become aware of that voice inside, when we become conscious enough to go, hang on a second, that's not what I believe. Even though it's what it's been telling you for a long time. What you can do is you can actually shift it. And what I mean by this is literally is as, an, as a, um, an example, a template, so to speak. If you're going through your day and suddenly you're doing something where you're, maybe you're driving in traffic and someone cuts you up and you start judging yourself for being in the wrong lane or for going too slowly or for letting something happen, notice that first. Become aware. It's like, what did you say to myself? Literally, I mean, it may come down to you saying it out loud to catch yourself because what you're doing... First of all, it's what's called a pattern, a pattern interrupt. And a pattern interrupt literally is interrupting a default pattern that's running automatically. And it's intended to gum up the works of that negative voice. And if you do that a few times, it will happen. As in, you will, in fact, stall its default approach because you said no. And by simply catching yourself in the act of giving yourself negative criticism, because it is you doing it, and saying, no, that's not true, that voice that's been running automatically for decades will start to have a um, it's like being tripped up in a run once it gets it's like if you get if if, if I'm, I'm trying to figure out an analogy will work here so let me see for a second <clears throat> let me try it out and see my hands <laughs> if for example you trip somebody who's running once they'll get up and keep going you trip them now this is not a pretty picture so bear with me as I'm trying to explain this if you trip them up a second time, they might be like going, hey, that's not right. And they might try and go running again. But you trip them up a third time, they're going to stop running and they go, hey, what the hell's going on? That, I know it's a painful analogy to use that, but if you come back to your own experience with this voice inside, if you trip that voice up in its process, the first time it may just like, might start up again and keep going. You catch it a few times, three, four, five times in a row with this, where no, no, again, you may not be perfect at this. So it may take one time every four days to catch it, where you're actually aware enough to go, hang on a second, that's not true. But the more you do it, the more abruptly and the more quickly that voice will stop doing its routine. That's a step in the right direction. Now, the thing though is to switch gears, once you've done that, to start affirming the truth for yourself that you know is true, which is that you, which I hope you remember is true, which is that you are a deserving, loving person. And mistakes that get made are simply that. They're mistakes that get made. They have no bearing on who you are or the value you have. I did a talk a week or two ago about the mistake we think well, we don't deserve, we don't think we're worthy because something we believe was told to us. We are, by default, we are worthy. We cannot remove that. But we start believing otherwise because of what we believe about ourselves or we're told by, by other people about ourselves. It's not true. Who we are and what we are about absolutely is valid, is worthy, is automatic. And this has been voice been running for a long time that's been running negatively and, and has been shutting things down. Hi Jane, I see my broadcast. And that is a trap we fall into. So by interrupting and tripping up that voice as a starting point, and I mentioned yesterday a whole new way of doing things where you can reintegrate that part. So again, watch this broadcast. We can then fill in the gap of that um, judgmental voice, that critical voice, with an affirmative voice. Now, it's, a, it's very mechanical. In the beginning, it's going to be very mechanical. But what you're going to do is you're starting to introduce a different language to your internal experience. 
so that in the tyrant that was criticizing judging and blaming you for everything that's been tripped up and been put on hold for a second because he doesn't know what to do now you start feeding in cheerleading type stuff and i don't mean exuber i mean well maybe it does but you don't have to be over the top about it it's to say things that are positive affirming that are true about you and if you want to add in things that are positive and directional where you want to go that you may not be at yet so affirming what you want and affirmations are a key part in in my um in my coaching and my work affirmations are part of my work with clients because they are not the sole tool but they're a great reinforcement for what's already happening and so when you start to say positive things that are true about you like you're healthy you're whole you're functional you care you have a heart that cares about people you make you love people around you these are all positive things that are true you can say the same things again and again if you wish to doesn't if you don't have a lot of ideas to come up with say the same things again it doesn't make a difference really because what you're doing is you're reinforcing and re-encouraging that tyrant energy to shift to cheerleader energy as i mentioned that shift may be quick it may take some time but don't give up be persistent be reminded repetitive and, and habitual there's a uh, I took in my um in my guided self-love practice, I talk about a 30-day practice to change, transform a behavior and transform a paradigm because it takes between 21, 25, 30 days, I've heard different, different numbers, to change a habit. So by doing this, if, you, if it does happen every day, great. If you do it every day, awesome. If you do it every day for a month, you're on a track to transform everything because again, with 30 days change a habit, if the habit's been tyrant, judging, criticizing, to change gears, to trip it up, to transform it, and to start speaking positively to yourself every day for 30 days, you'll transform your experience of life itself. It sounds very simple in a certain way, but it isn't. It's actually very profound in an elegant, simple way. So I guess it is simple, but it's also not easy. It does require some practice. And so this is a, um, what's the tip of the iceberg, but it's certainly a, focus point that you can work with so if this is something you want to find out more about I'll, I will put a link in the comments to find out more but I want to let you know you can do this on your own by simply doing what I said which is to practice being aware tripping up that voice that um, tyrant that critical voice and replacing it with a positive affirmation and it is mechanically possible it's a doable thing because it is a voice that is not out of control we've just forgotten how to control it and this is the thing for those of you who don't realize this, because I took a while for me to figure this one out too, is that voice that is negative, that critical voice, oftentimes it sounds like somebody else's voice inside, like a parent or a teacher or a bully or somebody else or an ex-partner, but it isn't their voice. It's a voice we control inside because it's our internal process and we have control over that. And when you forget that, that's all you've done, is forget that it's real. You have the ability to change it because you have control, always. But you have to be aware enough and awake enough to take control. That's what I'm saying. Awareness first, and then trip up that voice, and then replace it. So it's kind of three steps in a way. Um, but it is the awareness step first, and then stopping it second, and then replacing it third. It sounds simple, and I say it isn't necessarily easy, but it's a tr it's a it's a process you can do. Um, if you want to get some help, I recommend reaching out to me. I do have some skills in this area. I do have some products and programs and coaching that help you. The self-love meditation I mentioned, that's something that helps a lot because it's a 30-day um, practice, a process, a guided meditation you do every day. And it has audio meditations for an AM and a PM meditation that I provide that'll help you get to a place where you start to really appreciate yourself. And if you're doing this sort of transformation, undergirding it with self-love is a smart move to do. I recommend that highly. So I'll put the link in the comments for that and my book, as I mentioned the book as well. And I will put a link in the comments for a complimentary clarity conversation with me. So you can reach out for that as well. So having said all that, if you have any questions about this, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, you can reach out to me, reach out to me over social media and I'll put the links in the comments you can check out. But this is something I think you can do. It's a transformational process because what you're doing is you're taking your own default voice and transforming it into an aligned, supportive cheerleading voice. And everybody can use a good cheerleader. So with that, I wanna thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually. Yesterday was July 4th, so I did do something different that day, and I, and I recorded it earlier, but it is available in the replays, and I'll give you those as well. So 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook is where you can find me on Facebook Live seven days a week, and that is Barry Selby on Facebook. 
my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby Author, is where the replays go. And you can like that page and you can look at all my replays, including yesterday's. I mentioned it would be useful to watch that for part one. And also on my YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, you've probably already found my channel, which is Barry Selby, which you haven't already, already subscribed, please subscribe. And then a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, where all of these live as well. So you only track with me live. Facebook is where you catch me at 5 p.m. on my personal page. Replays on my business page on Facebook or on my YouTube channel. So three ways to watch. Um, again, if you have any questions, please post them below and respond when I sign off. The um, three, please, thing, three, links will, three links will be in the comments as well, um, whether, you're watching, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, I have in both places. And I think that's about it. That voice inside, you have control over. You can actually change and transform the way you listen, and you can transform the way it speaks. This is fundamental. It will change your life, and it's worth doing. So I thank you for watching. I appreciate you getting the input. I hope you take it to heart. And if you do this, let me know how it goes. I appreciate hearing from you. So with that, I thank you for watching again. I will see you again tomorrow. Um, I was almost said, I think, cut everything. So yeah, tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Same channel right here on Facebook Live. And uh, I think that's about it. I'll see you again tomorrow. You take care of yourselves. Bye.